Hey everyone, welcome to Life Group. Before we get into the study tonight, I want you to take a couple minutes with your group and share your three. I'm pretty sure just about every Christian knows at least three people in their life who need to know the message of the gospel and whom they are close enough with those people that they could be the one who communicates that gospel. So take a few minutes to think to yourself about who's in your three and then share those three people with your life group. You don't have to use names if you don't feel comfortable doing that. But think through who those people are and keep them in mind as we go through the rest of the study. We started the sermon this week with actually a couple of tangents, and to some extent I apologize for that, but I think they were really important things for us to think about. Uh, one of those tangents was about taking a day off. Uh, we talked very briefly about how during Holy Week, Jesus took Wednesday off. Even though he was in the last week of his life before he would die, he found it important to take a rest. As a group discuss, what are some of the obstacles to us taking real rest for ourselves and how we might benefit if we were to take rest for ourselves? The second tangent that I went on was about God's word and how usually when we think of the Lord's Supper on Monday, Thursday, we think of the disciples and Jesus maybe sitting at two and a half foot normal tables for us in North America. But when we read the scripture, we find out they were actually reclining low at ground level at a table that maybe he was only a few inches off the ground. And I talked about in that tangent how very often we can get an idea of what the scriptures say without actually carefully paying attention to the words that God actually wrote for us. As a group, go around the room and share a time where you came to a realization about what the scripture really said compared to what you thought it said. As we got into the meat, the body of the sermon, we talked about the three parts of outreach and a biblical view of outreach, the attitude, the objects, and the execution. So the, the um, why, the who, and the how of outreach. So let's start with the attitude of outreach. We said that there are three kind of pitfalls that people fall into when they think about their attitude of outreach, and that is the motivation, the action, and the justification. When we talked about motivation, we said that very often outreach is motivated by the law instead of the gospel. Why, are, why do you think that many churches and many pastors try to use the law to motivate people to do outreach rather than the gospel? Discuss that with your group. The second part of a biblical attitude of outreach is how we carry out that outreach. And we talked about the verse from 1 Corinthians 9.22, which says, I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. And we talked about how on the one hand, there are those who ignore that command and refuse to change things, even if it might save some more people. And on the opposite side, we have those who think that if we change things, then everybody's going to start coming to our church and being Christian. And we found out that both of those are wrong. Take a few minutes with your life group and share which side of that spectrum you tend to fall on more often and how maybe we can find a better balance between those two things. The third part of a biblical attitude of outreach is the justification. I mentioned that sometimes when I talk to other pastors or other members of churches, I'll hear this phrase, we're a very outreach-minded congregation, as if to say we are better than other churches who are insular or closed off or aren't willing to change things or aren't really interested in other people. With your group discuss, do you think our congregation struggles with that? Do you think we think of ourselves as better than other congregations because we have an outreach mindset? Or do we struggle with actually having an outreach mindset in the first place? Take a few minutes and discuss that with your group. The second part of biblical outreach that we talked about was the objects of outreach. And we talked about two characters in the story, Peter and Judas, and how Jesus washed both of their feet. We said about Peter, 
that it was amazing that Jesus washed Peter's feet because Peter did not think he needed forgiveness from Jesus. And it's amazing that Jesus washed Judas's feet because Jesus was going to later say about Judas that it would be better for him if he had not been born. And yet Jesus still washed Judas's feet. Obviously, the more dramatic of those is Judas. But I would like for you as a group to wrestle with how we as Christians who know what God has done for us and are faithful to God still struggle with what Peter struggled with. Feeling like we don't really need God's forgiveness very much. First of all, I'd love for you to discuss with your group, do you ever feel that way? You come to church and you think, yeah, I'm bad, but I'm not that bad. Or I don't really need to confess that sin. Or you know, it, it was kind of just a private thing. And then second, how we can create a culture either in our life groups or in our congregation to make clean confession and forgiveness a part of our regular culture as we interact as Christians. So take a few minutes and discuss that with your group. The third part of the sermon was talking about the execution of outreach. And there are many ways for us to do outreach, and most of them are actually pretty good. It's pretty hard to find an outreach method that's a bad idea. But what we find is that our culture dictates a lot of what is acceptable or maybe possible when it comes to outreach. And so in our culture, I gave you two suggestions. I said wash feet or eat. And when I said wash feet, I talked about doing the hard work of things we don't really want to do, or maybe things we're not particularly gifted at. As Americans, North Americans really, we've been taught that we should do whatever we want, that we should follow our heart, follow our dreams. When Jesus gets down on his, his hands and knees and washes his disciples' feet, he actually stands in direct opposition to that attitude. I'd love for you to discuss with your group, how do you see that attitude of, I should do whatever I want, whatever works for me, showing up in our church or really anywhere in society, and then how we can use the gospel to help people understand that sometimes we just need to wash feet. Final point for today then is eat, which was my second suggestion for how to do outreach. And I told you that story, maybe you remember it, about the two groups of missionaries who went into Thailand. One went in with the purpose of converting, one went in with the purpose of blessing. And how the ones who were blessings to other people actually ended up converting 50 times more people to the gospel than those who went in with the express purpose of converting. Because they were willing to invest in another person's life, in, in spending time with them, learning about them, and then serving them. And so what my last point is for you is not so much a question as it is a challenge. Could you as a life group make blessing other people a priority this week? I would love for you to go around the room and think about, discuss, talk, and maybe even hold each other accountable to being a blessing to somebody this week. Somebody who maybe doesn't expect it, probably doesn't deserve it, but to whom you could show God's amazing gift of grace. And remember, as you do that, the acronym that I taught you, B-L-E-S-S. -S. Begin with prayer, eat with them, and then listen to them so that you can serve them with not just actions, but also the words of the story of Jesus Christ. So take a few minutes and challenge each other and talk about how you're going to make that happen this week. Final point today, only if you have time. If you've run out of time in the Bible study, I want you to cut off the video right here and not take time to go through this question because it might take a little bit of extra time. But one of the functional challenges that we have to work through in our culture is that Christianity is not as well accepted as it used to be in North America. Traditional outreach methods of simply saying, we're a church, here come to us, are becoming less and less effective across denominations in Christianity. So how as a congregation can we support our members as we start to do more individual friendship evangelism rather than big programs which seem to be less and less effective in our culture? If you have the time, take some minutes to discuss that as a group. And if you have any really good ideas, let me know. I would love to work with you and work for you on helping us equip our members to be evangelists. 
If this is the end of your study, God bless you. And I hope you come back next week for another week of, of your life group. And I will see you on Sunday as we finish our series called out. God bless.